Hi, I'm Jim Linnell with Tandy Leather. I'm going to be showing you how to make a wallet and I'll be going through each of the steps with each of the tools in enough detail so that you'll know how to get the best results out of your leather work. We have our wallet all stuck together. It's time to go ahead and, and put the uh, stitching holes in there. And for this I'm going to use uh, some thonging chisels. These, these work really well. They're just, they put uh, slits in the leather for us to run the lace through. The, uh, I have a, a four prong version and then a single prong version and you need both of these to actually uh, be able to do that. The uh, size of the slits is roughly the size of our lace which is 3 30 seconds and the spacing is roughly the same. Um, if Usually if you have 3 30 seconds lace, you want to have your stitching holes 3 30 seconds ap apart. Uh, and so that these chisels help us do that as well. Uh, we've got the, the guideline traced on there, but it's time to start punching those holes. And when we punch these holes, we start actually in the corners. Um, we'll take the, the single prong chisel here and we will line it up so that it just goes diagonally across that corner. and. Uh, uh, we want to get these in place. It's real important that these corners are exactly where we need them. Um, I went through ahead of time and sharpened my chisels. These are cutting tools just like any other cutting tools you use and they should have uh, a good sharp cutting edge on them uh, so that um, they go through the leather without a whole lot of force so you don't have to use a lot of um, uh, banging to, to get a, a decent cut. Um, and so we start by doing the, the corners here. And I've got that same white cutting board underneath my leather as I'm doing this. That way I protect the, the chisel tips and protect my marble as well. Um, but it gives me a good surface to work on. Once we have the, the corners uh, uh, in place, uh, then we want to start um, uh, punching the, the holes along this guideline. And what I'll, I'll do is I'll use this four prong chisel to mark where that first one goes. I, I line up the, the, the end one right over that corner hole that I just punched and with a little bit of pressure I'll leave an indent and then my first series of holes, actually I'll punch four holes starting um, just that far from the corner and uh, I punch four at a time. Then the next time I use this punch, I will overlap. I'll use, uh, take that last uh, prong and stick it in the last hole that I punched, and I will uh, then punch three holes at a time from here on, and that way I keep my, my spacing nice and consistent. One of the challenges, though, is it would just, just be blind luck if this comes out exactly right so that this one here is exactly 3 30 seconds of an inch from that corner. So what I'll do starting right about here is I'll, I'll mark it just very lightly. I'll just uh, use a little bit of pressure and I will mark these holes where they're going to go and see how that's going to come out. And wouldn't you know it, that does come out just right. Um, but if, if for some reason this spacing wasn't right, if I was going to have too wide of a gap here, well then I would start spacing these a little bit farther apart out here in the middle so that I don't have to make it all up here at the corner. Uh, and you'll want to do that on each one of these sides. You'll want to, as you get maybe um, um, you know, 10, 12 holes away from the corner hole, you'll want to mark it out so that you can see how that's going to come out. If it doesn't come out exactly right at that corner, then you'll want to start doing your spacing a little bit between each one as you go here so that uh, you don't have a big gap at any point. And when you get it all laced up, nobody will be able to tell that you had that minor adjustment halfway along that side. So like I said, with this one, and it is blind luck that this came out like this, but with this one here, it looks like um, we did get lucky and it's going to come out just right. Um, so we'll uh, punch three at a time. And when we get down here to this, this last one, there's room for one more hole, so we'll overlap three and, and punch one. And we've got that side punched. So we'll do that same thing around the other three sides of this piece and we'll be ready then to, uh, to begin lacing. Um, so let me finish uh, the punching. 
Okay, we've got all of our holes punched into this piece of leather and before we start stitching it, we need to clean it up. And by that I mean, um, obviously we have, um, some of our pieces were cut a little larger than, than what the uh, actual uh, wallet back was. So we'll take and, and clean up these edges so that when we are um, lacing it, we have everything nice and clean along that edge. So we'll go around at this point and, and uh, trim up these edges so that uh, we have a nice clean edge here. I'll also take and round off the corners just a little bit. I'll take just a, a little notch like that and, and cut off that, that uh, square corner. That helps the, the lacing lay nice and clean along that edge. And then one last little thing <coughs> that I would do and will do is I'll take some of our um, medium brown water stain and here along the edges where you see the natural leather after where I've trimmed it away, I'll take and stain that so that if there should be any gaps showing between our lace, we don't have some natural colored uh, leather showing through there. We'll have this the same color and the lace we'll use is about the same tone. So we'll do that and then we'll start lacing. Well, we're ready to start lacing. You can see that I've taken and put some dye along the edge of our project here so that we won't have any natural uh, places showing through. And so we need to get our lace ready to go. I'm going to use some calf lace. It's a 330 seconds um, brown lace. It's pretty close to the color that um, uh, we use for the dye. And I'm going to use basically a double arm's length of lace is how much I've pulled off here. And using uh, the razor knife here, I'm going to cut that off. And uh, there's a little trick to putting this needle on so that you don't have to wrestle with it a lot. So when I get ready to, to put the needle on, I cut a, 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 a point, uh, like an arrow type point on the end of the lace. And the longer and narrower this arrow is, the easier it goes through the holes. So if you have a real long taper like that, it works out pretty good. And then uh, flipping it over, I'll take and, and sky the back of it a little bit. I'll, I'll thin it down so that it goes from full thickness down to almost nothing at the, uh, at the end of the lace. So sky off just a little bit there. And then using a two-prong lacing needle, two-prong lacing needle is, is uh, a flat needle. It's got two uh, prongs that poke up through the hole there. What I'll do is I'll slide the lace between those two layers of the metal so that, and I'll put the um, grain side, the smooth side of the lace against the uh, teeth that bite through and then using something like the uh, edge of this I'll, I'll push down so that those teeth actually bite into the lace and that's how the the lace gets held in place while we're, while we're la uh, lacing. Pass through the leather starting about five holes in from the end from the, the corner over here. And we'll push the needle through from the tooled side of the piece of leather. And uh, we'll, you'll notice that I've got the, the rough side of the laces up, the smooth side is down. So as we pull this down, We'll pull it down so that there's a, a tail sticking out roughly, uh, you know, like so, so that uh, it's easy to get a hold of. And then by running the lace through your fingers like this, we can keep all of the kinks out of it. And the next stitch, actually, we just come around and we go through the next hole. And as we pull this stitch down, as we start to get tighter, we're going to want to make sure that this loose end that we have here is caught underneath that loop. So as we pull it down, you'll see that we form an X here. And that's an important part of the, of the stitch. So that's how we begin, is just going through the first couple of holes and catch that uh, tail with the, with the loop. And then the next stitch that we make is we're gonna go underneath where those two cross over each other. We're gonna go underneath that X with our needle. And here again, we're, we're always got the rough side up, the smooth side down, 
And so as we pull this down, if we've gotten all the kinks out, it'll just lay down nice and neat over the edge, and it gives us that that nice uh, nice finish. And then running it through our fingers again, we'll go through the next hole. And this time, as you pull this down, in fact, every time you go through the hole, um, you're going to uh, this loop that is formed here is going to lay down over the edge of that. Uh, lace, but it's also going to cross over and make a new X. You see where it's, it's going over that last, uh, that last pass with the lace. So we've got another X that we just formed there. And so we'll take the, the needle and the next stitch as we go underneath that X. You see where we went uh, underneath there? Uh, and we'll pull that one down. And this is pretty much the pattern that we will follow in, in doing what's called the double loop stitch. That's, that's what this stitch is called. And we um, will go through the hole like this. And each time we go through the hole, um, we will, uh, as we pull it down, this lace will loop over the last uh, pass of the lace. So we've got another X that was formed there. And then we go underneath that X. And again, all of the stitches always go through from this side. We, we are never pulling the, the needle through from the other side. So as you're working on your project, keep the tooled side facing towards you like this and always be pushing your needle through from this side and you'll have it, uh, have it right. Um, so we just get into a rhythm. It's go through the hole, go through the X, go through the hole, go through the X. And it, what really speeds up your lacing is, is making sure that you don't have to fight a lot of kinks and twists in your lace. And so that's why I run it through my fingers like that, keeping the lace flat and, and making sure that there's no twists in it. And then as I pull that lace down, um, it lays down there nice and flat. You want to, as you're doing your stitching, you want to pull the lace snug, but you don't want to pull it as tight as you can. You don't want to stretch the lace. You don't want to... Uh, get it too tight. There's some things that happen with your stitching uh, when it's pulled too tight. You can, uh, you'll, you'll have the corners of your project will start to curl up and some things like that. If you see that on your lacing or on your project, that probably means that you're pulling your stitches too tight. Um, so uh, make sure that you just pull it snug, and uh, uh, this ends up being something that you can. Um, sit in the easy chair and watch TV or whatever and do this. This becomes really a, um, a easy process. Um, takes a little bit of time, but um, uh, just uh, just get into the rhythm of through the hole and through the X, and you can see it's developing this nice braid along that top edge. You can see it ends up with a, a real nice pattern to it, and that's that's what we want to uh, make sure that we're creating. through the hole and through the X. When we get up here toward the corner, there's a little bit of a change in that pattern. And uh, by that, um, we there's some of these to make, to make this lace um, pattern look consistent all the way around that corner, we have to go through some of these holes more than once. And I'll, I'll show you here. We're just about where we have to start doing that. There are a couple of ways that, that folks do this. Um, I'll do the one that I like to do the best, and um, that'll be a good way for you to start. Um, we're down here to, we've got uh, one hole, then the corner, and then, uh, so when we go to this next next hole here, we'll go, th go through it like normal, and pull that stitch down, make a new X, then uh, capture that or go underneath that with our needle. And then the next stitch though, we're going to go through that same hole a second time. We're going to go through this same hole a second time. Okay, so we went through the hole, went back through the X that was formed, and now we're going to go through that same hole a second time. And this time a new X is formed, okay? We have a new X that's formed there, and so we will go underneath that new X that was formed. 
So we've been through that one twice. And then we'll go through the corner hole next. And go through that X that was just formed. And then we're going to go through that corner hole a second time as well. And if, you're, if your holes are too tight, if you're struggling to get that needle to go through there easily, they make a tool called a lacing fid. And uh, these go through pretty good, so I don't need it. But a lacing fid is just enlarges that hole a little bit. You could use something like that or even just the point of your stylus to open it up a little bit if you're fighting it to get it through there. So uh, you, know, you might have that handy as you're doing this. So okay, we've been through the hole before the corner twice and through the X, the new X, and then we went through the next, the corner hole twice, and now we're going to go through the, the hole following the corner. We're going to go through that one twice as well. And this is how I like to do these corners. And I'll explain here. Let me get a couple more stitches in, and I'll explain to you why I do it the way I do it. We just uh, went through that, that hole, and we'll go through it a second time. And we'll go through that X, and then we'll, from there on, we're back on the straight run again, and then it's just through the hole and through the X, like that, over and over and over again. Um, when we go, th the reason we go through these corner holes multiple times is so that we can maintain the consistent braid. If we look at the top edge of our lace here, or of our project, you can see this nice braid that we have going here. If we, if we didn't uh, go through these corner holes um, multiple times, this braid would get stretched out and get pulled farther, and so the, the spacing on all of this would start to look a little bit weird. But by going through the hole before the corner, the corner hole, and the hole after twice, we end up maintaining this uh, nice consistency to this braid as we look at it from the top edge. And that's what the whole point of that is. It, it covers it up. It, it covers up the leather there real well. And uh, that's the whole point of doing the going through the corners multiple times like that. And so from this point on, we'll just continue lacing. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll get on around here. Well, at some point, we, uh, we will run out of lace here, though, because I didn't pull off enough lace to do the whole thing. And the reason I did that, um, and, and I've seen folks that have done this before, they'll They'll, they'll try to guess how much lace they'll need for the entire project. They'll pull that much off, and then they're pulling all of that lace through every one of these holes. And number one, that'll slow you down because you got uh, it takes you longer to do the lacing. But the other thing is that this lace being pulled through every one of those holes, by the time you get toward the end of your lace, it is all frayed out. It is all uh, fuzzy and stuff. It starts to look like it's been drugged through a knot hole, and, and you want... Um, you don't want that. So if you work with, a, like I said, a double arm's length worth of lace at a time, um, it, you'll end up with the, your lace looking a lot better. And it also when you um, uh, need more lace, we can, we'll splice it, and we'll, we'll do that here in a minute. Um, we'll, uh, we'll splice in a new piece and just keep right on lacing. It's, it's actually pretty simple. Okay, taking a look at where we're at with our lacing, um, I've got, I'm, I'm almost to the fold here. Here's the middle where the, the fold is. And I, I really uh, don't want to be splicing here. That would put a little extra bulk there, so I, I don't want to do that. So I'm going to splice. I'm going to stop, even though i got enough here for a few more stitches. I'm going to stop just uh, before I get to the end of this, this pocket here. And what I'm going to do is, at this point, I've gone through, um, through the leather. Um, in fact, I'll do one more stitch. Um, We'll, we'll catch this X um, here. And then when this next stitch goes through, instead of going all the way through, I'm going to actually bring the needle up between the two pieces of leather so that it doesn't go all the way through. You see, I'm bringing it up uh, it's, uh, between the pocket and the, and the back. And uh, so I've got this tail sticking out like this, and I'm going to cut it off. Um, uh, about an inch or so, so there's about an inch of lace left. 
And I'm going to do what's called a dry splice. Some of the other types of splices that they can do, they'll, they'll take and skive this down, two pieces of lace, skive it down, and then glue those two pieces together. And, uh, and that's called a wet splice. It's, they just basically uh, glue them together. I'm going to do a dry splice because you can do it uh, rather quickly and it's, and it's very well hidden. And then going back to our project here, um, we're going to take this new piece of lace and we're going to go down through where that lace came out and we're going to push the needle th on through that hole. When we pull this lace down, um, we're going to pull it down so that we have another tail that's sticking up about the same amount as the, the tail we cut off. So we've got two tails sticking up. This is the old lace going through from this side. The new lace is coming out the back side. So now we're, we're going to continue right on with our lacing. We'll get the kinks out of it here again. We'll, okay, the lace just came out of the hole. So we'll go through the X, the last X that was created. Pull that down, and as this loop comes over, we want to make sure that these two tail ends get kind of laced right in. We're going to actually lay them down so they lay right along the top edge of the of the project here. And uh, in fact, we'll let's let's pull this part here where these pockets are glued down, and we'll actually even lay this in between there, so it lays actually between the. Um, it, this, these two tail ends here are going to lay between the row of holes and the top edge of the lace, but it's actually buried between the two pieces of, of leather. Okay, can't see them right now, and then as, of course as we lace them in, they're going to be very secure in there because they get laced right in. So at this point we just keep right on lacing. Um, we've got the new lace in place, we've got the two tails tucked inside there. And we, we just continue uh, with our lacing. As we come around the last corner and head toward the, the point where we began our lacing, we need to be thinking about how we're going to finish this up. At this point, we're lacing, and I'm going to lace all the way up here to where the last uh, stitch was uh, can be made. So going through the X in the hole and and uh, now I'm going to go through this this last hole. And before I go through the next X, I'm going to undo some stitches where I started. And let me explain why. As you look at this lace, we've been keeping a nice consistent pattern running here and it's laying nice right up on top of the edge. But if you look at where we started out, that lace was kind of pulled over on the front side of this piece of leather. And so if we were to join those together right there, it would be pretty obvious that's where we joined those two together. So if we unlace three or four stitches here, we get to where this pattern starts to look about like, where, like it is as we come around this corner. So let's do that. I'm just going to take the pointed end of the stylus, and there's that tail we left um, hanging out there. So let's undo it, and we'll undo, like I said, about three or four stitches here so that we can get to the point where the uh, um, where we have the uh, uh, the same sort of a, a braid pattern going uh, at a, all the way uh, through. I'll take one more out. Okay, at this point I've got I've taken out four stitches on, and I've got I've got now this this angle is about the same. You see how that's the same. The braid is up on top here. So we should be able to pull that together and make it work. But what do we do with this? Okay, um, at this point we're going to take, we'll go down between these two pieces of leather here, between the pocket and uh, the wallet back, and we're going to reach in here and pull this lace up in between. Okay, so this, this end that we were pulling loose, we pulled it up in between. And it's real important that this loop right here does not disappear on us. We really need that loop badly. Okay, so make sure that that loop stays sticking out there like that. So I'm going to turn this over and, and see. I've got a, a piece of lace um, here coming up between the two pieces of leather. And that one there, we're going to cut it off. 
um, just like when we were doing the dry supplies, we'll cut it off so that there's a inch or something like that sticking out, and then we're going to lay it down. And as we continue lacing with this other lace, we're going to lace that end right in, right into the uh, to the uh, edge of the leather. So, at this point, we'll continue lacing with our our uh, piece of lace here, and uh, going through the X. But we got to start paying attention here to where we're at. Um, go through the hole. We're going to do this until we get up here close to the to that loop. One of the things you'll notice is as we come along now to this point, we've got we're going through the we've got two holes left on the front, and uh, we'll go through this X. At this stage, this next step starts to change a little bit, and here's what you're looking for. We've got two holes showing on the front. But if I flip it over, you see there's only one hole showing on the back. That's because this lace comes up and it's buried down in the middle. At this point, when we come through this X, this last X, we're going to go through the, the next hole. So now we have uh, one hole left on the front, no holes left on the back. And before we go back to this X, we are going to start tying it together. We're going to take the lace, and we're going to come up through this loop that we left here. We're going to come up th through it from the bottom side. You see? We're going to come up from the bottom side and pull that up, get the slack out of it there, make sure we have no twists in it. And then we'll go through the X. So. We pull this down, and as we start to snug this up, we want to pull these together so that we have about the same amount of tension. You see how that pattern's starting to show? And now, we have one hole left on the front, none left on the back. This is that same loop we just came up through from the bottom side and went through the X. We're going to take the needle and we're going to go down through the top side of that same loop Pull out the slack, and look at there, we've got that same pattern running now all the way along the top edge. Now it's just a matter of hiding this, this, uh, this, the end of our lace. And what I will usually do, and this is why I like to start near the end, is I'll take this needle and instead of going all the way through out the back, I'm going to reach in here into the opening down into the money compartment. And I'm going to pull that needle down in there and get a good grip. There we go. Um, I'm going to pull that needle out between the two pieces of leather. And again, as I pull this up snug, this will lay down there. And I'm going to, again, take a look at my edge, make sure that I've got the pattern running. Look at that. It's all braided together. We can't see where we started. We can't see where we finished. And now it's just a matter of snipping this lace off in here. And we'll just use the, the knife here real carefully. And we've got our, our wallet all, all laced up. We just put a frame around it. One last thing that I like to do uh, to uh, a project like this that we've done the double loop uh, lace on is after we're we're finished we'll take a mallet and we'll just tap this lace down this helps to even it out uh, helps to make that braid um, all lay up on the top edge of it and there we go we've just completed a wallet from scratch um, we've got it all laced up it looks like we got a nice little frame around it um, it's a very nice wallet. Got a couple of pockets here on the inside, on on two sides for you to uh, put your important things in. Got a money compartment here, and look underneath this here, we've got a divider that that's hid underneath there that that uh, for you to stash your your fun money. And uh, but there you go. There's a completed wallet. Thank you for joining me today. Be sure and check back often here at our blog. And we'll show you more tips and ideas on how to get the most fun out of your leather work.